Hey all, revisiting an old one again here with an update for uh, Ubuntu 20.04 uh, and also some of the versions in between I did the last one. So you might want to do this for remote access via a GUI or screen sharing or to a headless server possibly or a virtual machine and that's installing X11 VNC. Uh, if you install it via the Genome Software Center it doesn't ensure that it starts on boot so it's not very useful if you're in a remote situation unless you have SSH to the machine obviously then you're fine. So uh, this is a slightly longer process that's needed to install. It's a little bit more in depth, so I'll have a write up on my website so it's easy to copy and paste in because the formatting in one of the files is actually very important. So I'm just gonna log on to this virtual machine that I have set up. And I'm gonna open the terminal. First thing to do is, a, is an update. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to change the display manager. So Genome or Gnome or Gnome Desktop Manager uh, version 3, which is what Ubuntu has used since 18.04. Basically, it deals with Windows and sessions differently to the way that uh, this other desktop manager or display manager does. So we're going to install LightDM, which is what Ubuntu used to use before it moved over to Genome, Gnome, Gnome Display Manager. So we can install that and then we'll reboot to get that all to take effect. And reboot once it's complete. Great, so that's come back up and you'll notice that this uh, login interface now looks different. And that's because it's using LightDM, not the Gnome, Gnome, Genome Display Manager. We're going to log back in, open up another terminal. So now we're actually ready to install X11 VNC, so we'll just do that. That's now installed. So the next thing we need to do is test it, grab the IP address of this machine. I am 3.209. And then let's start X11 VNC. You just started by typing that in. It's got a couple of errors, but we'll leave those as they are. And then if we connect via VNC, you can see that I now have my VNC working away. So that's half of it done. Uh, next bit is to install a service. In Ubuntu and other Linux stuff, they work on, or they use systemd, which is sort of a massive process that starts up all the other processes. And we need to tell it that it needs to start X11 VNC. To do that, we need to create a, a unit file, which is what it's called. Systemd uses units and then units can rely on or dictate that other units start up and they're all linked together, but uh, we need to create one. So we need to do this as sudo and then nano, and then these files are stored in lib systemd system. And we need to create a new one called x11vnc.service. And then into this uh, file, you're gonna to need to copy and paste some text, which I'll have available and I'll put in the description. So what does this file mean? So we'll go through it. So this is, as I said, this is a unit that System D can use. So it forms part of the boot process. So obviously you give it a description. That's pretty self-explanatory. The after clause means it starts after the display manager starts. And it also waits for the network target and syslog target. And then we tell it it's a service. X11 VNC creates a child process every time someone connects to it. So we need to make sure that it's a forking type of service, which means that the sort of the parent process dies very early on, but the, the actual process continues. Exec start is the command that we would write in manually to start this. So it's effectively the starting command. Exec stop is the stopping command. Restart on failure means it will restart should something go wrong and it fail out. And then we want this to come up as a service before multi-user target. That way it, it starts in the right order in the process. So that's all to do with linking of units together and the order of processes. So let's look at this command a little bit more in depth. So XLMVNC is obviously our software. The dash forever command means that multiple clients can connect and then disconnect and connect again without the actual process dying. Normally with VNC it dies when you disconnect. The dash display and then this colon zero means that we connect X11 VNC to the, the current display session. And then this auth guess is to do with how sessions are managed within the X11 framework. So we need to make sure that it can point to the right one. This is the reason why 
X11 VNC won't run nicely with GNOME Desktop Manager. It's to do with the X11 sessions and the authentication between sessions. And then password is a password that you can set for the VNC session. So that's that. So we can write that out and close that down. Now that we've created the unit, we need to tell system D that they exist. So you do that via system CTL. We need to tell it to reload. And then once we've told it that it exists, we need to uh, enable it. And then once it's enabled, we need to start it. So I just cancelled it out and we'll check on the status. You can do this to all services that are installed in this way. So you can check on their status like this. So we can see that it's loaded and activating. So we'll go back to our VNC client and we'll try and reconnect. And this time it will ask us for our password because we've set a password. Great, we've got again our VNC session. Last thing to do before reboot is to change some settings. X11 VNC and LightDM don't like it when you lock the, the local session. So if, if you come back from Screensaver and it locks or you click on lock here, it effectively will lock you out of your remote session. So if we go into the settings, we can disable this from happening. So in privacy and then screen lock, we can basically turn off the screen lock, which gets us around this problem. It's not as secure, I guess, but you can install other things like X Screensaver, which will behave as a screensaver and can lock the screen in a slightly different way. They don't exit the session or they don't close the session, if that makes sense. So yeah, we'll just give it one last reboot uh, and then double check it works. So you see, I haven't logged into our machine yet. But if I go back via VNC, you see I now get the log on screen and I can log on as if I was in front of the machine. And that's kind of all there is to it. As I said, I will have a write up on my website so that you can copy and paste the commands in and the file. Uh, just be very careful about the capitals and other formatting.